Good morning and welcome to Thought for the Day, this Monday, the 6th of June. My name is Cathy and I live in the parish of Binstead. I've chosen this morning the passage from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 9, verses 18 to 27, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Start, verse 18. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to all of them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Truly, I tell you, some of who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. This is one of the most crucial questions Jesus asks of us. Who do I say Jesus is? This fundamental question is one each and every person needs to ask of themselves. Who is Jesus and am I going to take his claim seriously? What am I going to do about it? The Christian faith goes beyond knowing what others believe. It requires us to hold beliefs for ourselves. When Jesus asks, who do you say I am? He wants us to take a stand. Jesus was known as a prophet. And when people asked what he was up to, they went for models to prophets old and new, from Elijah to John the Baptist. Some may have been trying to identify Jesus with the Elijah who, according to Malachi chapter four, verse five, would return to herald the great and terrible day of the Lord. Certainly they believed that Jesus was behaving like someone through whom some great act of God was about to take place. But Jesus was more than that. Prophet he certainly was, but he was not simply pointing to God's kingdom somewhere off in the future. He was causing it to appear before people's eyes and setting in motion the events through which it would become firmly established. And sooner or later, he had to put the question to the disciples. Even though Jesus wasn't doing everything they expected a Messiah to do, the combination of authority, power, insight, and fulfillment of the scriptures that they had seen in him was too potent to mean anything else. To have called them was important. To have equipped them to go out and do what he was doing was something else again. Their own identity had come to depend on his and there was only one answer they could give. You are the Messiah, God's anointed King. Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ, because at that point they didn't fully understand the significance of that confession, and nor would anyone else. If we've understood Luke's story so far, with a strong hint of opposition from the Pharisees on one hand and Herod on the other, it is not a surprise that Jesus at once tells not just the 12 disciples, but anyone who wants to follow him, that there is a dark and dangerous time ahead. The world is being turned ups, upside down 
and anyone who wants to come through and be present when God's kingdom appears will have to be prepared to be turned upside down and inside out too. Jesus didn't come with a message that if we followed him, we would have an easy life, with everything happening exactly as we would like it. Just the reverse. People had expected the Messiah to come as a conquering king. But even though Jesus was the Messiah, he still had to suffer, be rejected by the leaders, be killed and rise from the dead. When the disciples all saw all this happen to Jesus, then they would understand what the Messiah came to do. Only then would they be equipped to share the gospel around the world. This was the turning point in Jesus' instructions to the disciples. From then on, he began teaching and specifically about what they could expect so that they would not be surprised when it happened. He explained that he would now be the conquering Messiah because he had first to suffer, die and rise again. But one day he would return in great glory to set up his eternal kingdom. Sometimes reading the same verses in another translation throws a different light on the meaning and makes it easier for us to understand. In the message paraphrase of verses 23 to 27, it reads as this, verse 23. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I will show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? If any of you is embarrassed with me and the way I'm leading you, know that the Son of Man will be far more embarrassed with you when he arrives in all his splendour in company with the Father and the Holy Angels. This isn't, you realise, pie in the sky, by and by. Some who have taken their stand right here are going to see it happen, see it with their own eyes, the kingdom of God. To save our lives, we need to lose them. To avoid having the Son of Man be ashamed of us, we have to acknowledge him. We cannot separate thinking from action in the Christian faith. Jesus' identity and his vocation are tied so tightly together that if you want to have anything to do with him, you have to take the whole package or nothing at all. There are no half measures in the kingdom of God. As we contemplate that challenge, let us note something that Luke emphasises at the start of this passage and one that follows on after. These momentous revelations of truth and vocation took place as Jesus had been praying. No half measures there either. What a wonderful example we have had in our Queen, that of sacrificing and putting others first, sharing her faith with others, not denying the Lord. She has not been ashamed of our Lord and neither should we. So in closing, with the hindsight of what Jesus did for us, who do I say Jesus is? How have I, how have I, or how do I respond? What is my testimony and witness? What is your response to that question when Jesus says, who do you say I am? Thank you for joining me this morning. Have a super day.